This episode is a popular request from the comments section, taking aim at a bot whose history goes back to the 80s, but whose greatest fame has only come in the last decade. These are the basics on the Autobot sharpshooter, Crosshairs. The original Crosshairs toy was released in 1987 and transformed into a Cybertronian off-road vehicle. He was a Target Master, a kind of Transformer who came packaged with a partner minifigure that transformed into a gun for them to wield. A profile for Crosshairs was written by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky, which characterized him as an armory manager responsible for procuring and maintaining weaponry for the Autobots. He was a fastidious, overcautious bot who didn't like to waste resources and wouldn't take a shot until he was sure he would hit his target. His target master partner was an alien from the planet Nebulos named Pinpointer, a brusque recycling engineer who shared Crosshairs' feelings about efficiency and wastage. The story of how Crosshairs became a target master was told in both the Marvel comic book and the three-part finale of the Transformers cartoon, The Rebirth, which each put their own spin on the idea. In the comic, disillusioned with his job as a supplier of instruments of destruction, Crosshairs joined a crew led by Fortress Maximus, who left Cybertron to seek a peaceful new life on Nebulos. To prove their good faith to the native Nebulans, the Autobots disarmed, leaving them at a disadvantage when the Decepticons arrived in pursuit. To save their world, heroic Nebulans biomechanically re-engineered their bodies to transform into new weapons for Crosshairs and his comrades so they could fight the villains off. In the cartoon, on the other hand, Crosshairs was part of a group of Autobots who were unintentionally blasted across the galaxy to Nebulos by a bolt of plasma energy. There, they allied with Nebulan rebels to battle the Decepticons and the planet's evil Nebulan rulers. One constant across both the comic and the cartoon was that the Target Masters were hugely overshadowed by the other characters in the story, getting very little to do. Though in the cartoon, Crosshairs did stand out from the crowd a bit thanks to his breathy, Clint Eastwoody voice provided by actor Neil Ross. Of course I have been wrong on one or two occasions. However, the Target Masters would get more time in the spotlight in Japan. There, the rebirth wasn't aired, and instead, an original animated series was produced, The Headmasters, which told its own version of the Target Masters' origin. In this series, Crosshairs and his teammates Point Blank and Sure Shot were a hard-edged fighting trio who had taken down Decepticons all across the galaxy whose cold, all-business attitude to soldiering caused them to butt heads with the impetuous young Autobot Headmasters. Pinpointer, meanwhile, wasn't a Nebulon, but a tiny Transformer from the Cybertronian colony planet Master, who became Target Master partners with Crosshairs when he and a small group of other Master refugees came to Earth seeking the Autobots' aid. While Crosshairs and his team were defending the tiny bot ship against a Decepticon attack, they were all caught in the explosion of a Decepticon plasma energy bomb, which mutated the smaller robots and fused them to the Autobots' arms in the form of weapons. Now, in contrast to Western media, in which the Target Masters simply held their partners in their hands, this series depicted the small robots as connecting directly to Crosshairs and the others' wrists, linking them both physically and mentally. Also, the American cartoon and comic based their depiction of Crosshairs on concept art for his toy, which featured a very different head design to the finished figure. Japanese media used the finished toy design. Crosshairs' toy was discontinued in 1989, and after that, it would be nearly 20 years before his name was heard in a Transformers toy line again. Until finally, a new incarnation of the character was introduced in 2007's live-action movie toy line, 
a recolor of the Transformers Energon Autobot Strongarm, who transformed into a Cybertronian Jeep. This Crosshairs was very different from the original in appearance, but had the same personality as a meticulous armorer. He didn't appear in the film itself, but featured in tie-in comic books from IDW Publishing, in which he was the head of a group of Autobots who had stayed behind on the dying Cybertron when Optimus Prime's team left the planet, who emerged from hiding to foil Starscream's plans to create a replica of the life-giving Allspark. A second Movie Universe Crosshairs toy, a recolor of delivery truck Autobot Rollbar, was planned for 2010, but was cancelled. A third was released in the 2011 Dark of the Moon line. Again, very different in appearance, but still with the same personality. This one was a recolor of the Autobot Thunderhead, who triple changed into a spider tank and a mech suit, both of which could be piloted by his human partner, Sergeant Kenai. Other incarnations of Crosshairs from over the years have included an evil version from the Mirror Universe of Shattered Glass, based on the 2007 Autobot Warpath, and a Decepticon Minicon helicopter released in the Transformers Universe line in 2009. But easily the most significant was the Crosshairs introduced in the 2014 live-action movie Age of Extinction. Unrelated to the previous movie universe take on the character, this Crosshairs was an Autobot paratrooper who transformed into a Chevrolet C7 Corvette Stingray. Part of the main Autobot cast of the film, he was a quick-on-the-draw sniper with a talent for taking his enemies by surprise, and a cocky, self-interested bot who wasn't much of a team player, unless he was the one in charge of the team. Yes, I've been waiting for them all to dispatch each other so I could take charge with no trouble at all. Just me, reporting to me. Still, his comrades could usually count on him when push came to shove, such as when he commandeered an assault aircraft from the mercenary Lockdown to come to the aid of Bumblebee and the Autobots' human allies. In addition to returning for the movie's 2017 sequel, The Last Night, Crosshairs appeared in assorted pieces of movie tie-in media and received multiple figures in the various movie toy lines, a level of fame and exposure that no other incarnation of Crosshairs has enjoyed, including the original. The original Crosshairs hasn't shown up much since the 80s, making little more than a few minor appearances in comics, including the 2012 Marvel sequel Regeneration 1, in which he was part of a small team who had to save the rest of the Autobots after they were brainwashed by the Decepticon Scorponok, and the Transformers Legends manga in 2018, set in the continuity of the Headmasters anime, in which he and his fellow Target Masters had to rescue their partners after they were captured by the Decepticons and turned into plasma energy bombs. This particular story was a tie-in with the release of a new figure of Pinpointer in the Legends toy line, which came packaged with Windblade. Crosshairs wouldn't get a new toy until 2019's Siege line, a retool and recolor of that series' Ironhide figure, which transformed into a Cybertronian van and sported a head based on his original cartoon and comic concept art design. This toy didn't come with Pinpointer, but a new Siege version of his partner was available separately, allowing the two to be reunited. Together again after over 30 years, but still a great example of how the first Transformer to bear a name isn't always the one destined to become the most well-known. And those are the basics on Crosshairs. Set your sights down below and let me know what you think of him in the comments. Subscribe for over 200 more videos covering Transformers characters, history and lore like this. Plus you can get early access to new episodes by supporting the show on Patreon.